Hello everybody, my name is Austin Tamargo. Today I want to talk to you guys about um, what I call the religious, no, dogmatic religious hegemony. I'm writing a new book um, that's very heavily inspired by Frederick Engel's work, The Origins of Family, Private Property in the State. And I want to uh, explain the different um, sociological developments and different phases of sociological development humanity has been on, been on since its first form of society. And so what I'm referring to here, like, like in my book, I don't want to call it the dogmatic religious hegemony because that's so much to say every time. But that to me explains it the best. Maybe there's a better word for it that I don't even know yet. But, but um, it's, it's looking at what, what Marx would call the, the slave mode of production. It's the first form of um, organized production, uh, you, know, you know, in a society. Um, that there's that forms class society. There's one group of people, the the owners, and then there's the slaves. You know, and in modern times, especially in the United States, when we think of slavery, we think of um, the um, African American people who were enslaved in the United States and uh, many other. Um, many other marginalized peoples like the um, Native Americans and the um, and, and a whole a whole bunch of other people so I want to point out that this slavery it was part of capitalism that capitalism allowed as 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 an old part of, of you know it, it, it was a surviving element that resurfaced throughout the ages and was still practiced into capitalism but the first mode of production that brings uh, humans into class society where there's one group of people ruling over the, the masses is the slave system. And um, Marx and Frederick Engels described this really well. And I feel like I can contribute to this topic and that's what I aim to do in my book. You know, I have a, a, a lot of other ideas that, that, that I'm bringing forward as well. But one that I, I'm really excited about and uh, that really interests me and I feel like it's, it's something that's actually contributing uh, to Marxism is looking at the slave system from the point of view of um, how religion and you know superstition, superstition and dogmatism or dogmaticism, how, whichever one it is, <laughs> uh, uh, influences that, that uh, mode of development. Um, so, so for anyone who's not educated on this, let me explain real quick. Um, when societies come out of tribalism, the first mode of production where they form a society where there's rich and there's poor, there's people who have more than others, is where some, some people or some other group or some, some other people or certain members of the society are made into slaves of the ruling class and they have to serve them, okay? And then this transition into feudalism where you know you have lords and ladies running the different provinces and the king that runs the realm and there's a whole court and nobility and that's the ruling class and then you have all the peasants and, and tradesmen and everything and they are they have to um, submit to this ruling class then we come into capitalism where people have more civil liberties um, you know and, and 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 anyone almost anyone can uh, become a member of the bourgeoisie, the ruling class, you know, by luck or, you know, by, by working hard to be, get, put yourself in a better position so that you can be above others. But th that's not our goal as socialists and communists. Our goal is to bring the workers together so we can make a better uh, world for everybody. And we want to, um, we realize that capitalism was a stage of sociological development it was very good for people to get civil liberties and more and more civil liberties to be added but we see because we have not progressed society is regressing you know the society is always progressing or regressing and whenever society is not allowed to move forward you know we see this reactionism which is people um, either from the ruling class or who have some association like white privilege to the ruling class like we live in this white patriarchal society and they see uh, society progressing and that, that's why we call it reactionism because they react to this and you know that's that's what we see now with the Supreme Court 
you know, they took a uh, woman's federal abortion rights rights away in the United States, and this is this is a great travesty, you know. Um, in a lot of states in the United States right now, abortion is illegal now, and we this is regressing as a society. This is taking away civil liberties, and capitalism is supposed to is is propagated to grant these civil liberties, but we see these civil liberties are slowly taking away, and society is not allowed to progress. So. In Marxism, we understand that society has different, has historically had different forms and has evolved out of these forms. And what brings the concrete change into the next form of society, the more developed form of society, more fair form of society, is revolution. You know, at first there was only slaves and masters. That was how society was set up. Then you had kings and queens and lords and ladies. You had more opportunities, even though for a lot of peasants and the lowest classes there was there was really no opportunity, but there was still you know there was still a there was developed you know not I don't know if you could really call it a middle class, but the people the merchants and the tradesmen and you know specialized labor people and stuff like that, and then like I said in capitalism, now anyone can work their way up the economic ladder, you know, but now we see, like, like I'm repeating myself over and over, we're regressing, we're taking away civil liberties from people in the United States today. So, um, what I wanted to say about this um, dogmatic religious hegemony mm -hmm. is that in the, in the slave mode of production, the reason why the slavery worked, and, you know, we know in Marxism that the, the reason that um, the reason that revolutions happen and that society progresses and, and moves to the next stage is because that revolution, but that revolution happens because the masses, the, the working class, the slaves, the peasants, whoever it is who, who is a subjugated class understands that they have to understand science, they have to understand the laws of the world and they have to form theories and then test those theories and they have to say, okay, you know, what, what can we do to, to change our world, you know, we have to understand the laws of this world, the laws of this reality, and, you know, the, the material conditions, you know, what is actually happening right now, and what we can actually, you know, do to solve this. And so, um, in, in the first modes of production, in thousands and thousands of years ago, you know, not only, not only was the, the lower classes uh, very uneducated, but even the ruling classes, <laughs> there wasn't, there was no, you know, public education system. You know, there was no, you know, people just had to go off whatever, whatever came to them. Okay, so even Mao Zedong says, before um, we had science and were able to logically reason things, humans uh, depended on spirits or or some supernatural, or he, uh, he didn't say specifically supernatural. He, the quote ends when I say spirits, but it's basically saying people rely on this intuition and this, you know, this 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 under spiritual understanding they have, you know, that that, that they assigned spirits to things and gave their own uh, stories and and um, what do you call them fables and reason things happen. So we know that this is a lot a lot of these even though some of these societies had a good idea of, of what happens. Some societies even can track the stars and know when, st when certain stars are gonna come, you know, and when certain weather patterns or, or certain floods are gonna come so they can, uh, you know, supply their irrigation system. But they don't know why this happens. They don't know the science behind these things. They think this is just, they, in, in these times, they think this is the gods. These are some uh, higher forces that we cannot understand, we have no way to understand. This was their mindset. And so the lower classes, whenever they are born into submission, whenever they are born a slave in this time period, thousands of years ago, you know, there's this, when you cannot rationally explain, you know, what is, what is happening, you know, in, in this time, they believe that this was supposed to happen. This is God's will, because if if it was not meant to be, then it wouldn't happen, right? And this this is why I believe what I'm trying to express here, and you know 
what I'm trying to bring forth with, with this uh, new take on this is very important because we st still see this reactionary element in our society today. People still say these things. You know, people still say, oh, uh, it, if it's meant to be, it'll happen. You know, and, and, and a lot of people in the United States are, are very, very indoctrinated to, to cling to this uh, dogmatism. Some, some pe for some people it's Christianity, for some people it's spiritualism, or, or many, many other things. But before we had a way to scientifically explain why things happen, then humans just had to accept that there was some higher force that they didn't understand that, was, that, that made this happen. And they assigned human characteristics to these forces, as, as we know, and made gods. And so if, if somebody, um, by amassing uh, more property than, than the other families, through generations become a ruler over these people um, it would be seen as a society as the natural order of things you know this this is God has instilled this man we see this you know very plainly in all the religious texts from this time you know in you know thousands of years before z the year zero we, we see so many people say the gods granted him his position <laughs> And so this this uh, patriarchy, you know, this is when patriarchy started, when we start when we transitioned into um, state society and class society, out of tribalism, and it, I mean it it, it kind of started, you know, it had some elements in tribalism, but it it, it became an established systematic, uh, oppressive, um, you know, reinforced thing under the class society, you know. For, Frederick Engels say that says that in tribalism, you know, the males passing down to their sons, you know, their possessions and stuff like that. That's what that's the first class separation of society where women's work becomes less valued, because before that, gathering was actually seen and 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 taking care of of the stuff inside was actually seen as as some some would say even better than hunting because hunting didn't always yield yield results. You know, and, and a lot of results. And so men and women were equally respected. And before this, uh, lineage was traced by the mothers. And then, you know, then the patriarchy came. So I, I, think, I, th I think I pretty much gave a good explanation of this. I hope, I hope somebody <laughs> has watched this all the way through and appreciates um, the, the work I'm trying to do here. Uh, if anyone is listening right now, please leave a comment or a like. Uh, a comment will be really appreciated if you have anything you can add to this, any feedback on this. Uh, I have a lot of stuff I want to be presenting in my second book. My first book is available on Amazon. It's, it's from last year. It's not that great, whatever. But this next book is going to be a great Marxist-Leninist, uh, you know, work. And and I, and I'm really I'm re I'm really excited for it. And so, the, like, like I said, this is one of the ideas that's been brewing in my mind for, for quite some time. And I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember if there's anything I left out. I, th I think I, I explained it pretty well. But the key point, the key point is to, to understand that religious dogmatic he hegemony is what set the stone for, you know, divine right. Um, you know, in kings and e even modern day, even modern day capitalists believe that they are uh, blessed by karma or some higher power um, to be in their position, that they deserve this position over others and have such excess that they can never spend while other sovereigns are earth. They believe that, like some of these actual celebrities believe that they're spiritual beings that, that, that bless them with this opportunity to enjoy this abundance while others are suffering around the world. And it, it, it's very sick, you know, and that's why I'm, I'm completely devoted to communism. And I wanna, I wanna add intellectually all I can. And so, yeah, the, the key point is emphasizing how that has, has influenced our current society, how old social orders um, influence the present, because reactionary elements still remain even from the slave system. What Marx would call a slave system 
what what I would still respect as as being called a slave system, but viewed from another lens could be called the religious uh, do, the dogmatic religious hege hegemony or the dogmatic hegemony um, that first occurs when class society develops still affects us way down the chain, you know, from the slave system to feudalism to, to capitalism that we're in now. This reactionary element of believing that um, just because something happens that it's meant to happen and, 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 that, it, and that it was supposed to happen. You know, th this is something we, we really need to purge from our minds as humans if we want to develop because the world the world is not just some 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 space where some god's going to come save us the world is a place where we have to take action to actively create the world each day and uh believing that you know this divine force is just going to naturally guide things and make everything the way they're supposed to be is really damaging especially with our modern scientific advancements you know in um you know the capitalists are killing my pl our planet plain and simple and so you know we we need we need to have socialism soon and we, we need to have a socialist revolution in the imperialist core of the united states and the nato nations so any communists in the united states and the nato nations should be working very hard right now to try to add whatever they can to the movement and try to organize with other comrades. That's something that I'm trying to do more of is organizing with other comrades. Because I admit I have lacked in that department. Uh, but but I, I understand that and I'm going to be working on that. But I, I think we all have a responsibility. If anyone is watching this video and understand everything I was talking about. If you have, if you have the intellectual understanding from, from, from applying your, your, your brain to, and mind to study these things. And you, and you understand this, then you, I, I, I sincerely believe you, just as I do, have a responsibility to, to contribute towards the revolution. Um, because no, no, no guy's going to come and save us. And there's so many people in, in, in our world who believe there is and are just waiting for the judgment day. But... We have we have to take charge of our future now. So thank thank you everybody who's listened to this. Thank you so much.